Hi, and welcome to this post about, about my beginnings in photography. I was very young when I was first handed a camera. My dad was always a, a very keen amateur photographer, and probably, in fact, there's a photo somewhere on, in my archives of me holding a, a similar box camera to this. This is the, the first camera that I ever held, I think, in my hands, or one very similar to that, in fact. And this one here was a 620 Brownie Junior, and it took 620 film. So some of them took 620 film, which is like a roll film, like medium format 120 film. Some of them took 120 film, and uh, I think some even took 627. I'm not sure of that, but very basic camera. And the cameras of the day, with all their bells and whistles and digital um, uh, special effects, uh, really, apart from all the special extras that a modern digital camera can bring, they still do the same thing that these sort of cameras do. The very first camera or type of camera I can remember taking a photo on was this one uh, here which uh, is a, um, a Brownie 127 Kodak camera. I don't think it's the actual one that I used because uh, to tell you the truth when I was a young lad and I had first used this particular camera. I think it was a Kodak Bantam or something like that that I used, which was a Bakelite, made out of Bakelite. And this one takes 127 film, similar to 120 film. And by the way, these films you can't get anymore, as far as I know anyway. Uh, although you can modify 120 films to work in some of these, these type of roll film cameras. Very basic. Just one shutter. You couldn't set the aperture. You just wound the film on a little window in the back to see which frame you're at. You wound it on by hand, took the photo. And it doesn't even have a tripod mount on it. No provision for flash, little viewfinder to look through in the back there. But they worked. And so I think as I was saying, when I was very young, I had one of a little similar camera to this, which is what I first took photos on a school excursion when I was in primary school. And uh, one night I had a running with my dad or my mum in my bedroom and I picked that little camera up and threw it across the wall floor and it smashed, I think. So uh, I, perhaps I was a bit of a petulant young lad and I always regretted it afterwards because I didn't have it anymore. But uh, that was the first type of camera that I ever used. And uh, then um, when I was in the 1970s, I was going on a work trip to the Northern Territory in Darwin in, in Australia. Uh, which is 2,000 miles from Adelaide, where we are here, and uh, I thought well, I should take a camera to start taking photos. And uh, the camera I used was this one here, and this still works and it's still got a film in it. Uh, I don't know when I last shot the film in it, but I've got lots of cameras that are loaded up with film, and every now and then I clip off a few frames and eventually take them in somewhere to get processed. This is a, um, a Kodak Retina camera, 35mm camera, rangefinder camera, you have to manually wind it on, you have to manually set the counter each time that you, uh, that once you've taken a shot, otherwise you do a double exposure. Rewind the film here, uh, you've got shutter speeds ranging from, uh, I think, B. So the shutter speed on this camera ranges from one second through to a five hundredth of a second and then you've got your time exposures on there as well of course so uh, chunky little camera folding bellows style you can see the, the bellows in there I think if you just turn it around you can see the bellows from the side to to cock the shutter you've actually got to push push this but, button down here or this lever down here like so and then you trip the shutter by pressing this lever here I'll just take a photo here which will be, see how that, then you've got to reset it each time after you've taken the photo. You then actually have to um, to wind the film on, we've got that in advance, is the advance lever, this little lever here. You wind the film on. First of all you've got to do that to set the, change the actual um, number of the shots that you've taken there. And then you've got to uh, wind the film on to the next shot can see the knob going around on this end. Now you're ready for the next one. So then you've got to cock, then you've got to um, cock the shutter again, press the lever, then you have to advance that lever there to, to wind the counter on and then you can rewind ready to cock it for the next shot. So it's not 
point-and-shoot simplicity and of course each setting you've got to manually set your uh, your apertures you, you set with this little uh, gadget here there's a lever around there that changes the aperture you can see this little pointer and try and get that there this little pointer moving around there on the top there that changes the aperture and then to change the actual shutter speed you actually change it with this the front ring here change the shutter speed with that and at the end of the day you just fold it up and there you have it so that's your little Kodak retina there are lots of these around beautiful little cameras my dad actually took this uh, camera with me in the Second World War he was in the RAAF he was a Catalina pilot uh, he didn't serve in active combat duty of any sort but he did uh, was stationed in Darwin and also uh, on the islands north of Australia, mainly Moratai Island, north of uh, Australia. Uh, during the, the Second World War he took many memorable photographs on this camera and also uh, as uh, he came back after the war and uh, when I was growing up we've got heaps of photos in our family archives that were taken on this little Kodak Retina camera. And uh, beautiful little cameras, just precision instruments and uh, very quiet shutter, leaf shutter, you can actually fit a flash to these and of course you can get flash sync at all speeds up to 500th of a second because it's a leaf shutter and uh, very useful if you're taking shots, you can hand hold this at, at slow shutter speeds if you're in a theatre, in a darkened uh, theatre for instance you want to take a shot of a stage show, not that you're supposed to be doing that, I'm not recommending that you do that but you can actually take a photo, just point like that, set it on, you know, because it's only got a fixed lens, you can't zoom in and zoom out with these things and uh, you can take shots and no one will hear the camera go off because the shutter is so quiet and uh, so they're a beautiful little camera and I still like using them, I've still got a film in it I must finish that film and get it back and see what I've been taking it's probably, the film's been in there probably four or five years so that's the little Kodak Retina which is what I really started to learn photography with mainly taking slides because in those days, back in the 1970s and, and onwards a bit from that slides were a lot cheaper than colour prints and uh, so we got I've got boxes and boxes of slides that I took in those early days. And then I graduated from there to a rangefinder 35mm camera, a Yashica Minister D, which is a beautiful little camera. And uh, I must, uh, I haven't got dug that out of my store storage today for the purpose of this video, but I'll get that and take a photo of that and put that on this particular post. So the, the very first real camera I had, I suppose an SLR camera, was the Pentax Spotmatic. Now this is not the Pentax Spotmatic, this is uh, the um, uh, Pentax KX, very similar to the Spotmatic but a beautiful camera, nice and chunky, manual camera, there's, there's, there's a light meter in it, but you've got to set it manually and so everything is manual, all you've got is basically your, your shutter speeds from uh, one second to a thousandth of a second, you've got a flash sync speed of a sixtieth of a second and uh, it's a matter of winding on every shot, focusing every shot and checking your exposure and you can change your film speeds of course on it and uh, these are beautiful cameras and, the, and the, the amazing thing of course is that now you can get the Pentax KX digital camera although these are probably just about off the market now uh, I've also got a Pentax KR and um, which is a little bit more upmarket than this one but this one does most things and including uh, digital video and um, the Pentax um, KR is a little bit more of a refined camera, a little bit better than this one and uh, of course the um, top of the range Pentax digital cameras at the moment um, well the latest one is the Pentax K30 and uh, before that they had the Pentax K5 and before that the Pentax K7 also uh, I've got medium formats film cameras, medium format film cameras which perhaps I'll show you in another post, uh, the Pentax 645 of course there's now a digital equivalent to that camera, the 645D and also the Pentax 67 which was uh, also a medium format camera, both those cameras taking 120 film and uh, the quality on those cameras you know, is the equivalent of as good as Hasselblad's and all those sort of uh, fancy cameras and uh, I love using those too the only trouble is, of course, that film is so expensive these days. If it wasn't so expensive, I'd, I'd still be taking a lot more than I do. 
but I love getting these cameras out and teaching people how to use them. Um, particularly people who are studying photography should get hold of a, a manual film camera and just run that alongside of their digital camera and just learn the basics before you have to worry about all the bells and whistles that your digital, ca digital camera can do. Because once you understand how these work, um, you can understand what your digital camera is doing for you, whereas you used to have to think about what you were doing with this before. But knowing what this does, what these old cameras do, means that you are so much more efficient in one wondering what all the menus and all the different features and functions are uh, on the digital camera because you know what it's trying to achieve because you can achieve all those things that are in there on these cameras. So thanks for listening today and uh, I hope you've enjoyed this uh, short uh, video on a little bit of my photographic journey. It's a journey that uh, started way back when I was a kid I guess but more so when I was uh, in my early adulthood in the uh, I must have been about 24, 23 when I got serious about photography and as you can see now I'm past 60 now and not far off 70 but I still love it, love all the technology and, and love uh, taking photos so happy clicking <laughs>